Now, on the bench today, we've got a uh, professional antenna. It's not a uh, cheap Chinese antenna at all. Um, it's made by Herber, probably saying this wrong, but uh, sorry, Hubber and Schruber. Uh, it's a Swedish uh, technology company. They make a lot of uh, networking gear and antennas and other things as well, I presume. But uh, that's the serial number on the side of the box there. Uh, it's a discontinued antenna now, they no longer make it, but you can still buy this on Mouser for around £87. When they first came out they were around £140. I paid, uh, I think it was £26 for this off eBay, and it was sold to me as a uh, Wi-Fi antenna for 2.4 gigahertz, a MIMO Wi-Fi antenna. But uh, I've since found out that uh, it's also working on the LTE band, around 2 gigahertz to 2 0.3 gigahertz so we've got wi-fi with this one and we've got some uh, lte thrown in the mix as well so let's take it over to the uh, network analyzer and see what kind of output we're going to get with this see where the frequency responses are so here's the antenna under test on the test bench then this is the setup we've got we are going to be looking at both traces both outputs of uh, this antenna at the same time and already i'm seeing on the network analyzer this is going to be interesting because whatever's going on on the inside of this antenna both of those ports aren't connected to uh, identical antennas there's uh, going to be some differences in there because we're getting a uh, a different output for each trace on the network analyzer so here we are on the network analyzer then you can see the two traces we've got trace number one here we've got a beautiful dip for uh, the 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi. We've got the uh, second trace, trace number two. Again, a very nice dip, but not quite as wide. Uh, the cursor is on uh, 2.5 gigahertz there, 2.4, 2.45 gigahertz there. That's bang in the uh, middle of the Wi-Fi spectrum. And then we can go up again, all the way up 2.4 gigahertz. Lovely, lovely dip. And again, continuing pretty pretty wide 2.6 gigahertz there but um, as I said this antenna is apparently uh, for the LTE networks as well but uh, looking at what we can see on the network analyzer it is only trace number trace number two which is this trace here that has a good frequency response for LTE around the two uh, gigahertz mark there let me move the cursor along and you can see we're at 2.1 gigahertz there go down 2 gigahertz 1.9 gigahertz and 1.8 gigahertz so for LTE yes this antenna uh, does work for LTE but only on one of the traces so that should be interesting when we take this antenna apart to see what's on the inside um, the ports on this antenna are not marked so what I'm going to do is put a little sharpie mark on trace number two here the port that that's connected to uh, because that one is going to be different to this one so we're not going to see two identical uh, traces or you know antennas for both of those ports on the inside of this antenna because both are good at 2.4 although slightly different uh, but this one is good for the LTE whereas this top trace here that's no good for LTE so should be an interesting antenna to take apart now a couple of things to note about this antenna is that it is a uh, planar antenna. Planar antennas tend to be uh, typically wideband but not all of them but uh, this one obviously is and uh, I've also put a little mark here so we know which side is um, you know able to uh, cross those bands off at uh, LTE there from about 2 gigahertz to 2.3 gigahertz where this side is uh, Wi-Fi only so let me crack this open should be interesting to see what's on the inside of this and for its small form factor as well uh, 5.0 uh, uh, sorry 8.5 uh, DB of gain it's uh, packs quite a nice little punch for its size but uh, that'll be an average across the band of course and now we've got the lid off we can see that we've got something uh, really interesting here it's uh, not like your typical patch antenna or uh, possibly even uh, a double 
dipole antenna but um, it is a uh, two-dimensional planar and we can see here we've got this huge huge ground plane here and we've got slots cut out of that ground plane these two look identical in size and we've got this slightly different one here that's uh, in a slightly different orientation we've also got these cutouts here in the corners not quite sure what's going off with those unless it's something to do with the uh, beam forming of this antenna to create a specific radiation pattern we've also got this uh, parasitic director here that's built into the case itself a uh, sheet of uh, aluminium it looks like and uh, that's also probably something to do with beam forming to create a specific beam maybe even adding a little bit of gain in there as well with it being parasitic i don't know but uh, yeah very very interesting and if we flip it over we can see we haven't got a great deal going on the other side but what we have got are transmission lines but the first thing i want to point out with this is uh, this grey here um, this is something we don't see very often and uh, this is probably where the cost of this antenna comes from because this is a Teflon dielectric and it's very very expensive and with an antenna like this something that plays a big part in a slot antenna um, or a, you know a two-dimensional planar like this is uh, the dielectric that you use and a teflon dielectric is um, very very low loss and it also has a dielectric constant which is pretty close to that of air fr4 board is around four uh, dielectric constant somewhere between 3.5 and uh, five to six even depending on the fr4 board but uh, Teflon is extremely low loss and uh, has a dielectric constant which is much, much closer to that of air. Now looking at the transmission lines, we've got this transmission line here, which is the transmission line that feeds this center slot on this side. And this is uh, the slot which incorporates those LTE bands to 2 to 1 gigahertz to 2.3 gigahertz as well as the Wi-Fi so this will be all set at uh, 50 ohms a 50 ohm feed and we're not having a physical connection with that slot it uh, just terminates underneath the slot and because we've got such a low loss dielectric it uh, excites the slot so it's able to radiate outwards and uh, it is shorter than these two we know these two are the Wi-Fi ones but we've also got these wider arms on here and that uh, works the same way as having uh, a thicker material if you know in previous videos if we use a, a thicker wire for instance for a bi quad uh, we're able to increase its uh, beam uh, sorry its bandwidth to a certain extent and that's exactly what we're doing here with these uh, wide end pieces here where uh, it's uh, able to extend that uh, bandwidth over a greater area but uh, yeah it's no physical contact it's just a, a capacitive connection to excite that slot there in the middle and then we've got this second transmission line of course and it's interesting how it breaks off um, how it's much thinner here maybe that's just spreading uh, you know the uh, load out so we've got equal uh, proportions of uh, energy going to each one of these two slots here but uh, it, this arm kind of comes out here and then feeds uh, the slot underneath and these slots are a little bit longer in fact let me measure them might give us a better idea and these are measured out at uh, around 30 millimeters now when I've made slots for 2.4 gigahertz before for 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi uh, the measurement uh, is around 60 millimeters so I don't think these are uh, a quarter wavelength um, you, well they're not a quarter wavelength but uh, you normally find uh, slots at a half wavelength so uh, possibly uh, because this one's a quarter wavelength that's again why we've got these uh, little wings if you like on the edges there to take that into consideration I don't know but uh, certainly uh, 30 millimeters and normally for a slot uh, you would find that measurement around 60 61 62 millimeters 
So uh, yeah, possibly these ends are um, extending its uh, its bandwidth slightly because it is quite wide from about 2.3 gigahertz to 2.5 gigahertz. But uh, possibly these little uh, edges, these arms on here, if you will, are also uh, you know making it resonant at 2.4 gigahertz with the slot only measuring uh, a quarter wavelength. Possibly, I don't know. But uh, again, the uh, transmission line is capacitively connected not physically connected but uh, yeah it's always interesting to see things like this now interestingly enough as we know that uh, this one here is uh, Wi-Fi only and this one incorporates the LTE band I'm wondering if this antenna was made just for a uh, specific piece of equipment because um, if you just connected this up to a normal router and uh, the uh, ports on the uh, on the router, the uh, antennas, um, fed the same signals into both of these. So let's say, you know, we're having those LTE uh, band uh, signals at uh, two gigahertz, two point three gigahertz, being fed into this antenna as well, which isn't made for those bands. I can't see it working very well. So because we've got these two different uh, antennas for uh, different frequencies here. Um, I'm wondering if this was just made for a specific uh, piece of equipment at the time and uh, the manufacturer of the uh, access point asked for this to be made uh, from the company just for theirs. I don't know because feeding a signal that uh, this antenna is not designed for into this is uh, it's going to be damaging to the overall performance of the antenna. You're going to have a lot of uh, VSWR flowing back down the line because it isn't matched so yeah I'm kind of thinking that uh, possibly this was made for a specific piece of equipment I mean uh, I wouldn't want to go uh, it'd probably get away with it if it was just a, a Wi-Fi router at 2.4 gigahertz uh, you'd get away with it fine but if you wanted to connect this up to a uh, 4G router let's say then uh, you know having uh, that 4G signal being fed into this element as well as this one it's not going to work out too well it's not going to be uh, very good at all so hopefully uh, you enjoyed this uh, video it hasn't gone on too long but uh, you always learn a lot by taking things like this apart especially from the pan uh, the uh, professional manufacturers it's always nice to have the physical object in your hand you know it's one thing to look at pictures and read a book but uh, having the uh, object in front of you really enhances the learning experience and we always learn from uh, doing something like this and doing a teardown of a professional antenna. Um, yeah, and uh, hopefully uh, we'll have some more of these on the future. When they do come up at a decent price, I do like to get them and I thank my Patreons for that because they help me to uh, buy things like this for the channel. And uh, if you want to uh, help support this channel on Patreon, uh, link will be below. But uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a uh, thumbs up. Comments or questions, drop them below and I'll do my best to answer them. But uh, this is an antenna I uh, haven't really studied much when you compare it to some of the other uh, antennas we've had on this channel. But uh, yeah, I'll do my best to answer them and hopefully... You'll join me on the next one.